you guys want to, on the way over there, you want to come closer so you can see? You might not be able to see way over there. Okay, so today, even for the color guys, all the way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so good, good. All right. So today, we are going to talk about what we believe. And what does it mean to believe something? That monsters were real, that would be a belief. Yep? Yeah. Today comes from Psalm 19, 1 through 4. I'd like to share with you. 
The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There's no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voices go out through all the earth, and their words the end of the world. In the heavens he sent a tent for the sun. This is the word of God for the people of God. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 So, we're really just going to begin, because I would be remiss if I began by not talking about a creed. So we're starting this series on the Apostles' Creed. Um, so we'll be sharing the Apostles' Creed with one another every week throughout the course of Lent, because I think it's really important. So what's a creed? What do you believe? What do you hold to be true? Um, the first creed we see in scripture is in Deuteronomy. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Or what do we believe as a country? The Declaration of Independence says, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable, unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is a creed. It's, it's the words that we believe and how it should be lived out. At the heart of America's Pledge of Allegiance, we say, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We believe in this country, this is what we say, and we seek to care for our country and the people within it. Some of the mottos and taglines of businesses are creedal in their nature as well. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Save money, live better, Walmart. Think different, Apple. So let's see what we know about the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed was written in the 4th century. The final version that we declare today was written in the 4th century. That's 1,600 years ago. But the first versions were written in the 2nd and 3rd century, and they came under different names than the Creed. I think that that's important, just to recognize how much history there is in the Creed. So today we're going to focus on the first line. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Who is God? What do we believe about God? What, how does that shape how we live our life? Some people refer to God as a higher being. It's just that if they don't know what else to say, it's a God, right? There's a God. But we believe in something a lot more detailed, something a lot more de definite. We have a much more specific understanding. We believe that God created the heavens and the earth. As we look at Genesis, we see that God said, let there be light, and there was light. God created day and night. God created the sky and the land. God created all the living creatures with it on the land, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. We believe that God took the dust of the earth and created man, and out of man took a rib and created woman. God created out of nothing. God has been here from the beginning of time. Omniscient, omnipresent, always with us. We believe in this one God, creator of heaven and earth, and we recognize that our God, that the earth and the cre creatures of the earth proclaim the work of God. That's what Psalm 19 is saying. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Have you ever looked out and noticed, just this morning as I was walking across the driveway of the church, I heard a cardinal say, the signs of spring. You hear, if you see the buds, you know, come up in the spring, you see the leaves change color in the fall. I hope you've watched a flock of birds fly south for the winter or return in the spring. The creation cries out to God. So Weston and I were on a trip recently. We went to Alabama and we were on the, on the coast, uh, the Gulf of Me Mexico. And we were walking along the beach um, several times. And one day, we're walking along the beach and we see this crab. It just shows up right in front of us. It's washed up, excuse the fingerprint, the water bottle in the corners there. It's washed up right in front of us. 
And we watch it, because I don't know if either of us have seen a crab wash up on the shore. Wasn't shaking his head, no. And all of a sudden, it buries itself in the sand. And it's gone. Like, nobody would know there's a crab there, except for we are amazed. So we just stand there and stare at this thing. Now in the sand. Pretty soon, a, a wave comes up along the shore and washes down, and we see this little bubble in the exact place that the crab was. And we keep watching, and we see this stream of bubbles. And we're like, that's where the crab is. It's created this air pocket. This is amazing. Right? It's this really simple thing. And these crabs do it all day long, all the time. This is normal. This is how they live. We've never seen it. We're going, this is so cool. And we stand there, and we watch it. Both silent and chatting a little bit. And then pretty soon, another wave comes up. You know what? They've been coming up and down, and we've just been watching this piece of sand, wondering when it's going to come up. Pretty soon, it comes up, and it skitters back. The wave takes it back into the water. I just think it's amazing. It's, isn't this amazing stuff? Like, God created these little creatures to just be who they are, to just skitter up on the sand and do what they do, and skitter back and whatever else they do. I don't know. Pretty cool. So one of the things I really wanted to do while we were gone is see dolphins. I thought it would be so cool, hang on a second on this one, it would be so cool to see the dolphins. And so we get on the boat, we go on this boat tour that they guarantee that you'll see dolphins. And so we're, we're riding on the boat and the captain says, you know, they're going to say that there are dolphins out here and we'll tell you and then we want to make sure all the kids can see you so we'll rearrange. So anyways, there's, I don't know. 30, 40 people on this boat with us, and pretty soon I hear, hear someone, you know, say, oh, there's, there's a dolphin, and point, you know, there's one. And then, you know, you hear all the rustle of people slowly, it kind of gets across the crowd, and everybody's pointing and looking, and then there's two, and three, and four, and they're playing in the water, and we get a little closer, and the boat stops and idles, and we just watch them. So the captains now told us, maybe some of you know this, but, but they love to play in the wake of the boat. So... We, after a little bit, we rearrange the boat so all the kids can see, and the boat takes off. And the wake comes out behind them. And go ahead and show the next one. And oh, it's not big enough. So these are dolphins. I'm sorry you can't see them very well. Um, and they're like just playing in the wake of the boat. And I see them swimming underneath it. There's a couple together, and then there's one jumping, and then there's one doing this side, like it snacks, like a belly flop, you know? Like, ouch! But they're just and then they're happy as can be. And pretty soon I'm like, I want to be a dolphin. Like, that looks so much fun. They're just playing. They're just free to be the created creatures that they are, living into all that they are. And this is just a couple little things. Like, we see the creation of God, praise God's name, just by living into their being. God is creator of heaven. I think it's so cool. So if you're a Facebook friend of mine, you can get on my page and you can see a couple of these pictures a little clearer. I'm sorry that they're so far away. Um, so we know this, that God is creator, but we also know that God has all this power that he's created and he can recreate. And he also chooses then to be father. So God chooses to be in a relationship with us. God wouldn't have to choose to be in a relationship with us. But we say we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Romans 8 says, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs and heiresses of God and co-heirs with Christ. So we are children of God, just as Jesus is the Son of God. We are co-heirs. Abba. Abba is the most intimate name we can call God. It's the most, it's not Father, it's not Dad, it's more like Daddy. Like, Daddy, Daddy, is what this word is saying. Daddy, I love you. You know, and our God loves us deeply. But I also recognize that for some of us, depending on our situation, depending on how we were raised, that there are people that their father on this earth has hurt them. Somehow through abuse, neglect, what it may it be, there's been hurt. And so when we hear God as father, God as dad, we don't have something 
to understand it or compare it with. So I just want to challenge you to recognize that this calling of dad or daddy is, is the most loving thing in the world. It's this creator that comes and, and seeks to care for our needs, seeks to walk beside us, seeks to give us peace in the midst of distress and hope in the midst of hopelessness. So sometimes I say creator instead of father when I refer to God because I know that that may meet some hearts in a different place. And I just want to leave that with you to consider. But I also think that if we only call God creator, then we miss a very important piece of the intimate relationship that we have with God. So both are so important. We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. John 17 is one of my favorite, um, I don't know, I guess I have a lot of favorite scriptures, but Jesus prays for us in John 17. And Jesus is praying to God the Father, and he says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. God loved us before the creation of the world. And Jesus continues, Righteous Father, if the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. So sometimes it's hard to understand or recognize God as Almighty or God as Father, but through the tangible means of Jesus Christ, we can connect with God, and that's what Jesus came to share with us. <coughs> so as we move through our days and weeks to come, as we consider, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And I want you to consider what that means for you. How, what do you believe, and how does that shape your belief? I believed in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth for much of my life, which has shaped who I married, what occupation I took, how I lived my life, what choices I made from here to there. Because I believe that there's a God that cares for us. I believe that there's a God that heals. So I can go to God in my brokenness and say, God, restore me. A God that creates surely can recreate. A God that Father surely can cherish and love. What do you believe and how will you live it out? Are you going you to trust that you can tip over the jar when you know it's sealed? Are you going to sit on the pew? What are you going to do? So would you pray with me today? Most loving Father, Almighty God, Lord, we come to you proclaiming that we believe in you. We know that you are good, and we know that we can cherish you. But God, sometimes there's doubt, sometimes there's fear, and so God, where those things come in, would you intercept? Would you lead our thoughts and our minds? Would you strengthen our belief as we test the waters, as we test our belief by our actions? Would you come in and strengthen it? Would you help us to consider what it means to believe in you as God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we pray the prayer our Father taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I just pray that as you walk out the doors today, that you experience God as Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, that you recognize God all around you. God shows up in ways that you can't understand or experience in any other way but by God. So go in the great love of God. The great peace of God. Allow God to walk into your heart and mind and soul and spirit. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.